love that. I, it's, it's just, I do. And my daughter Leah loves it too, so. But you know, the thing that's uh, really important to note that Michael and Marmar, of course, originally came from England, and they lived under socialism. And they know what it's like. And I think that's why they're so passionate about making sure that doesn't happen here. So that's really important to them. Just want to talk to you for a minute about what's been going on uh, at the state house. The state, well, it's the state house. So I talk about the uh, state GOP offices. Um, when we uh, were thinking about running uh, for the state G GOP chair, we knew in advance that the entire staff that was currently there was going to leave. So we had to come up with a plan that should I win uh, would work. And so what we came up with was a transition team that would jump right in, starting the first day, if we should win, and not miss a beat. And that we could take our time and learning the process and the systems and procedures that are, were there and in place, and take our time and looking for the very best people to replace the staff that was there. And I'm pleased to announce that the transition team finished its work Friday and we have a great full-time staff now in the offices, and we haven't missed a beat. So it's gone very, very well. Uh, I do want to mention a couple of names tonight. Jennifer Horns here. Jennifer has been phenomenal in helping out with the transition team. Uh, she's just been a big part of that. Uh, my, my, it's like my brother Jeff Chinister is not here tonight, but Jeff also was a key member of that team. And another fellow, uh, Chris Buck, a lot of you may not know Chris, you're going to get to know him. He was just phenomenal as well. We had other members of the transition team that, that are not here tonight, uh, but they all were a great help. Those three were the ones that were in the office and did a lot of work, and we had others that worked in the sidelines as well, and I'm so thankful to all of them for what they have done. Uh, it couldn't have happened without them. So now let me tell you, we've got three full-time staffers now, my new executive Director is Will Robleski. Now, a lot of you may know him. Uh, Will Robleski was the campaign manager for Ovid LaMontagne. So, Will started a few weeks ago. He's been doing a great job. He jumped right in and just took control. Uh, we also have uh, a communications director and uh, Christine Barada. Now, Christine was Jim Bender's director of communications. Uh, she's a dynamic young woman uh, and she's on board now. Been about a week. And our newest addition is here tonight. And you may know Ellen Krista. Is Ellen back there? One of the things that uh, is so critically important, particularly for the state GOP, is fundraising. Because our responsibility is to make sure not only that we meet our payroll, but that we have funds enough when we get into election periods to help out candidates against the Democrats. So, we want to make sure that this time around we place special emphasis on that and we decided to change it up. You know, you have field operations directors and you also have political directors and uh, we decided to put those hirings off for a little while and focus on putting the money in the bank first and that's Ellen's job. Right, Ellen? Okay. So, <laughs> so that's what we did to change it up. We're going to place a, a major emphasis on fundraising uh, we have hired a full-time person, being Ellen, to do that, but we also did something else that's, that's quite different. Uh, we have a very sizable finance committee. Uh, we're going to announce, this is about nine or ten folks, uh, predominantly consisting of very successful business folks, and Jim Bender is on it, he's a co-chair. Uh, we got Bill Binney on it, he is a very successful businessman, he's a co-chair. But we got a lot of dynamic business folks that are involved with the committee, and we'll, we'll put a press out, presser out next week. And again, what we want to do is get the business community back involved with this party and make them realize that it is this party that understands uh, the importance of small businesses in our, in our state and our country. And I am a businessman, been that all my life. Uh, we are the highest corporately taxed as a state, corporately taxed state in the country. Did you know that? I mean, I mean, how, how bad could it be for small businesses to have that hanging over your head? So we've got to have immediate and deep tax relief for small businesses in this state, and we also need to have 
uh, some regulations removed. I mean, we just have this barrier of regulatory uh, rules and regs that I think are nothing but business stifling measures. So those things as we go on will, will I'm sure, occur with the uh, legislature that we currently have in power. And wasn't it a wonderful November 2nd in this state? Wasn't it? I, I never dreamed that we would wind up with 298 out of the 400 state representatives, 19 out of the 24 state senators, and all five executive council seats. We have a veto-proof House and Senate. So what that means is that John Lynch can go fishing for two years, okay, because he's not going to have a whole lot that he's going to be able to do. So that if we didn't run the table, that's the next best thing. So what I want to see happen uh, in the coming months, in the coming two years, uh, is number one, we need to expand the size of our, our party in all counties. We need to unify this party like we've never done before in this state. A unified party produces the results that you just saw November 2nd. We've got a lot of new folks that have come into the party that probably haven't ever been active before. We'll call them newbies. But we have the newbies, and boy, they were passionate, weren't they? They came out. I came out of the Tea Parties, but people have to understand that what the Tea Party platform is, what that's about, is what I'm telling all of you is nothing more than an American platform. We want small government. We want reduced spending. We want tax cuts. We believe in individual responsibility and in, in individual liberty, and certainly certainly getting back to our Constitution and our constitutional values. So, yes. But those are also Republican values, and our Republican platform is a dynamic conservative platform this time around. I'm so pleased with it. And it represents all of those things. So I think, and, and I'll tell you, because I decided to do this simply because I feared for my country and my state. I think all of you realize, certainly by now, that this is our last chance. There are no tomorrows. We need to take back, we took back our state, we need to take back our country, and we're going to do it in 2012. We're going to elect a good, strong Republican conservative president, and the state of New Hampshire is the one that's going to pick that person, I'm thoroughly convinced. <laughs> One of the things I noticed as I traveled the state during the gubernatorial campaign was that, you know, I, would, I, would, uh, I spoke at hundreds of city and town committee meetings uh, and also county meetings. And I would travel maybe a four-hour round trip and I'd come home. My wife would say, gee, you know, how'd it go? And I'd say, well, it went well, but there were only 12 people in the room. And that was sad. You know, that was the average. Then there were a few town and city committees that really were organized far better than others, and they would have 25 to 35 people in the room. Now, if I went to a liberty-oriented event or a Tea Party-oriented event, there'd be 150 people in the room. So this, I'm, I'm looking, there's something wrong with this picture. And what's wrong with the picture is, they're all Americans, but we're separate. And what we saw on November 2nd is a coming together and we need to stay together. 80%, if we agree with 80% of the platform, and we don't agree, we'll never will in 100%, 80% better darn well be good enough this time around, folks. We've got to set our priorities and make sure they're right. The fiscal issues are the big issues of the day. The economy is the big issue of the day. All the others matter, but those things got to get solved first. Those things need to be the focus. The other thing I noticed, there were no young folks. There were no young folks. You know, I say maybe the average 55 and older, and I'm not being critical of 55 and older, I'm in that bracket. But seriously, folks, I mean, that's a problem. The leaders of tomorrow are the youth of today. So my focus is going to be, we're going to get right into the college campuses. We're going to go and entice those kids to join the Republican Party, get involved with the college Republicans, and then meld together with what we now already have is the young Republicans. We have a great infrastructure. 
We just need to organize it. We need to get down the football field and make sure we start getting the kids involved and the youth involved with this party. So that's another thing that we're going to be doing. One thing I do want to say, and I'm going to say it every time out, I am tired of Republicans nipping at the heels of Republicans. We as a party have got to stop that. We have plenty of things to go after the Democrats about, so please let's start focusing on those things and make sure that we stay united as a party. It's, it, to me, I think, a, a problem that is, is generational. We have been doing this for many, many years. It, it, it's the other thing. We can't be picking favorites anymore. That won't be what I'm about. Everyone who decides to run for office, regardless of what it is, deserves an even playing field. Don't they? Yes. All of them. All of them. <laughs> let the people, let you decide in the arena of ideas. You're astute. I gotta tell you, I would cringe sometimes at the questions you folks would ask me. But all the candidates get those questions and by God, it's great that you have the opportunity to do it. You're smart, intelligent folks. You will make the decision after you get to see the candidates. That's how it should be. They should be able to ask you for, for contributions, financial support, of endorsements, whatever it is, and you can pick and choose as time goes on who the candidates are that you decide are the better ones that fit your platform, whatever. But that's the way I want to see it happen in our party, and that's essential going forward. And lastly, I have to say this, it's very important. We have to send Barack Obama packing. That's what has to happen. We are going to have a lot of very good candidates coming through our state. Please, give them all a fair shot. Go listen to them. Question them. Spend time with them. You can do that in this state. Don't pre-choose. Don't be too quick to do that. There are a lot of good folks that will be running, and any one of them is better than Barack Obama. That's a good problem in the state that we have. So my challenge to you is simple. Stay involved. Really stay motivated. Keep your eyes open. Look what's going on in Wisconsin right now. Don't think it can't happen here and in other places and in other states. Be vigilant. Be Americans. And make sure that we retain the liberty and the freedom that this country is so proud uh, to be built upon. And make sure also that we focus on our Constitution and those values that have made this country great. That's what I'm about. That's what you're going to see at the forefront of my mind as we go forward in the next couple of years. There's a lot at stake, an awful lot. So let's make the right decisions. And thank you very much for coming tonight. I appreciate the support.